Today on Styrene Haven Models, I get super crazy with some glue. I shoot my shot with a B-17 bomber. And I mind all the gaps. Part of the challenge of building scale models is to get a smooth and even surface by filling in all the gaps and seams so that you can have as close to a flawless finish as possible when the model is completely painted. This can end up being a tedious and daunting task with lots of repetition and sanding if you're not familiar with the best methods for filling in these gaps and seams. Every modeler has their preferred method of taking care of this problem and there is no right and wrong answer to this. Over the years, I've tried several types of putties and fillers to try to make those gaps disappear and I've come to realize that I want to keep the process simple, minimizing the amount of putty I have to use and trying to do as little sanding as possible to get a smooth finish. The ultimate goal is to get the pieces to fit in such a way that when the glue is applied it will slightly melt the plastic and as you press the two pieces together the melted plastic will naturally fill in the gap. But as all modelers know, even with new tool kits, this is not always the case. The first step in filling gaps and seams is to identify where those gaps are going to be. In the previous video of the series, I took this B-17 and primed it, making it very easy to spot all the places that I'm going to need to pay attention to. When it comes to hairline seams and gaps that are under one millimeter in width, my go-to filler is super glue or any type of CA cyocrinate glue. I always keep two viscosities nearby, a thin CA and a gel gap filling CA glue. Thin CA glue flows nicely through capillary action into hairline seams. It dries relatively quickly and dries very flat to the surface. It can be sanded easily and even polished if necessary. Gap filling gels have a long working time and can be manipulated into larger gaps and even built upon if you're trying to fill in a larger, deeper gap. You can use anything as a palette to hold the glue and all I've done to apply the glue is make a simple tool using a bamboo stick and wire wrapped around so I can use it as a dropper. You can use the wire straight or even create a loop in it if you need to hold more glue. As glue builds up on the wire and dries, you can take a simple pair of pliers to crush the glue and remove it, giving you a clean tool again. Once the glues have been applied and fully cured, I can start sanding them. Typically, I start with a 400 grit sanding stick and work my way through 600, 800, and if I need a higher polish, we'll even go to 1,000 and 2,000 polishing sticks. In order to make sure I wasn't going to create any flat spots on the fuselage, I was using the sanding sticks and trying to follow the curvature of the fuselage as I was sanding the super glue down. There is black colored CA glue out there, but as I'm using glue that's clear, it is difficult to identify if the glue has completely filled in the gap after the sanding process. A simple way to see the quality of your work after sanding is to simply take a little bit of silver paint and brush it over the gap. It will almost immediately identify if the gap has been completely filled and if your sanding has produced a smooth surface. The reason why CA glue is one of my favorite fillers is that it dries very hard, does not shrink, and won't react to most harsh or volatile paints and chemicals. It can be sanded just as smooth as the surrounding plastic. It can be re-scribed just as clean and tight as the surrounding plastic. And because it doesn't shrink as it dries or have air bubbles, you typically don't have to do very many coats. And since it is a glue, it actually strengthens the joint as well. Here in the rear wheel well, I took a little bit of CA glue and filled in a small divot where the two pieces meet so that I can actually reshape it and make it look like one solid opening with no seam or gap. When it comes to dealing with a step between two parts, this is where I find gel CA glue to really come in handy. Because of its long work times and the ability to shape the glue into the step, I'm able to minimize how much I'm going to have to sand by shaping the glue in such a way that it will actually blend the two pieces together when it comes to the sanding. I've heard other modelers say that CA glue can be difficult to sand, especially if it's been left for days or weeks after it's fully cured, but I don't find that to be the case. When filling the gaps on this B-17, there were days and even over a week before I was able to get to sanding many of the areas that I had glued over and I had no difficulty sanding any of those areas. For gaps over one millimeter, if I can't reshape and sand the parts to create a tighter fit, then I try to fill the gap with styrene plastic first 
I found that by trying to fill larger gaps in with gels, putties, and glues, I tend to run into shrinkage issues. Having to either apply the gels, glues, and putties in multiple coats, creating a lot of air bubbles, and some of the more volatile paints that I'm going to use can actually react with the gels and putties, which will make the seam or gap reappear, or worse yet, crack. Once I've cut the styrene strip to the proper length, I go ahead and just shape it a little bit using my fingers to get the curvature correctly so that it will contour with the wing itself. Then it's just a matter of applying some Tamiya Extra Thin on both surfaces, mating the two parts together and making sure that it's flush with the surface of the wing and shaping the plastic strip to match the curvature of the wing. My second filler of choice is Perfect Plastic Putty. This is a water-based putty that can be applied directly from the tube and once dry can be re-wetted with a damp cotton bud and then shaped and pressed into the gap further and smoothed out while it is still slightly wet. The great thing with this type of filler is that it doesn't require a whole lot of sanding once dry and if you need to reshape it all you have to do is slightly re-wet it and you can go ahead and reapply it and reshape it into the contours and gaps that you need it to go into. By using a sewing needle chucked into a pin vise, I'm easily able to run the needle into the panel lines and clean out any of the excess filler. The only drawback with this type of filler is that once dry, it still is slightly soft. It can crack and flake easily if you're trying to rescribe it. So my solution is simply to apply some CA glue, either thin or gel style, over the perfect plastic putty giving it a surface that is sandable and rescribable. This is a great two-step method of filling the majority of the gap with perfect plastic putty, shaping it and allowing it to dry and fill into the gap, and then applying a CA glue over it to give it a surface that is sandable and scribable. Coming back to the B17, now that I feel confident that all the seams and gaps have been taken care of, I'm ready to reapply some of the paint that I've lost from the sanding process and then apply another coat of primer to check my work. As in my previous video, I go ahead and apply Style and Res primer over the entire model, giving it several light coats and drying the coats in between so that I can shorten the dry time and be able to flip the model in all the different sizes that need to be coated. Once I can handle the model again, I go ahead and give it a quick reinspection noting a few places where I may have to reapply some more CA glue to fill in some minor gaps and seams that didn't get completely filled in on the first pass. So things are getting a little bit more exciting now. I'm just about ready to apply the black base so that I can get this model prepped for a natural metal finish. Be sure to check the description for links of all the products that I've used in this video and like and subscribe so that you'll be immediately updated when I post the new video of painting the black base on this model and getting the first coats of natural metal finish on it. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of my gap filling process. And thanks for watching.